welcome you. on behalf of the Museum of Graffiti. Thank you for taking time. Yeah, thank um, you for introduction and hello everybody. Yes, I, I'm so glad you're able to join us. Um, you've been really busy and um, lots to catch up on about you and your history and your story as coming up as a graffiti artist in Eastern Europe, Prague, uh, Czechoslovakia to be exact. Uh, a really interesting time actually given yeah given um, uh, it, you know, the fall of the Berlin Wall in, in the late 80s. Uh, but before I do that, what I want to do as customary, I want to just, just really quickly read uh, a little bit about you to share with, with our, our, our guests, and we'll just go right into the presentation. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, and, and forgive me, because I, I, I decided I'm going to try to be as, as uh, as brief as possible with with the uh, uh, the intro, uh, so that we can dig into the work. Um, uh, so folks know in his early years, Kalab painted graffiti in his native Prague under the pseudonyms Cakes and Point. After years as a prolific graffiti artist, Kalab, and please tell me, am I pronouncing your name right? Yeah, Jan Kalab. Jan Kalab is Kalab, right. right. Entered the Academy of Fine Arts in Prague, where he earned a master's degree in two thousand six. Attract, attracted by abstract neoplasticism, his work evolved from the making of straight line sculptures and 3D alphabetic letters designs to constructed painted canvases. Uh, he is widely known for his vibrantly cover, colored abstract designs of organic shapes and various forms. Um, and of course, this includes paintings, sculptures, installations, and murals. That said, uh, I one of the great curiosities for me has been through the years as is the migration of graffiti, uh, especially to Europe. Um, I, I went to Europe, uh, well, London in 85, but graffiti was already there. Tell me about this graffiti and it's such a beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, they say it rivals Paris in its beauty, uh, but how is it that graffiti arrives in Prague? Yeah, it, it was like after the Iron Curtain uh, fell down in like 89, like after Berlin Wall fell down, all this Eastern Europe just got to release it. And we start to get like uh, graffiti tourists from, from Western part of the world, like mostly the first first guys were, I think, from Paris and Berlin. And then, then guys from Berlin, they became like often and it was like our biggest influence. Obviously, Berlin is like pretty close to Prague. So also us like being teenagers, like we jump on a bus and we went to Berlin to to get like to, to walk around the rail tracks and, and uh, look for the pieces, take pictures and uh, get, in, get, get getting inspiration. So it was, yeah, I, I think it, it didn't take more than like one or two years until like uh, the graffiti really like pop up in, in my country. Yeah. And then and, well, I, there's, there's, it's interesting, sorry to interrupt, because one of the things that I found in my research that was really interesting was the Lenin Wall, right? The John Lennon Wall, yeah, yes. uh, which was very famous. This is a picture of it in 1981. It, but it's yeah, not, it the, it's not it, it, right, but it's not the graffiti that we know, that, that you practice. No. No, no, it isn't. Uh, but the, the, the irony is that like the London Wall is an old town. So, so it's actually the, the beautiful part of town. And it's like wall like scribbled and painted and all, all, over and over. And uh, so like a, a lot of people in Prague, they had the problem with graffiti and they hate it because of uh, Prague is like beautiful, Baroque and Renaissance, all like very, his very historical. And then, like, uh, came graffiti and tags, and which, which, which was like a kind of ex ex visual, visual explosion or pollution on a, such a beautiful, beautiful like surroundings. Yeah, because so, the city is is you know yeah. has this gothic uh, and baroque yeah. feel to it, but also you guys were under like a, a really strict re regime politically. Yeah, but like, they, that was like when I was a child. So my generation, like we kind of like remembered it. But like in our teenage, like it, it changed. So it was like perfect, perfect timing. So like when I when I was getting like uh, adult, like it already was uh, away. I still had that uh, that memory. And I was a little like we were, of course, a little shy because everything was uh, 
much more expensive uh, like in uh, like in the western countries so it was like it took took us years like until we we get a confidence and uh, like that we can do uh, like everything what the, what the other what the other guys can do so this this was also part of like this uh, this transformation also mental it mental transformation from from this like communistic uh, era until like freedom world and so as a young kid in this transformation and, and as graffiti uh, that was being, inf you were being influenced by, by Germany, who were some of the early adopters and pioneers of like Czech the, graffiti? The, like the, the, the biggest influence had like uh, the CAF crew from Berlin to, to Czech graffiti. So it's like guys from, from Eastern, Eastern Berlin, which, which travel like all around Eastern Europe. And they did like first survey here. They did the first color production around here, like actually like not far away from the from the land wall. So this 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 was the main main influ influence. Like we didn't we 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 weren't like influenced by New York that much because it's so it was so far away. So like you know we we take the steps until we 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 reach or we discovered like re rediscovered New York. Or New York, like what was happening in eighties, you know, or late seventies. Yeah. So you had the Germans come in, but in terms yeah. of the native pioneers, who, oh, yeah. who, were, who were the native pioneers? Are you amongst them? Uh, no, I, actually, I'm the second generation. They're like before me, there was a there was a TCP crew, and like Scarf and Dion and uh, these guys. They were the, like real first generation they were like only a couple of years older than me but they started uh maybe like two years earlier than me or three and it's only like at that time it was like a, a long time like after, when, when i when i started like they were all the like kings you know to me were, in, were, they, my wall, eyes. were they wall, wall riders or train riders uh wall riders and and train by train riders like we did we do like it, it was the same it was the same people like we didn't it was not uh, divided you know like it it was like like one scene like couple of guys and doing like everything like from walls to, to trains like subways yeah so here we see a, a, a you again this could this could easily be new york this is you on a in a train track so it's one of your pieces yeah. it's um, london this is london this is london 1998 i think so yes. it's it's interesting to me about Europe is that uh, you guys weren't uh, afraid to try to to travel um, to different countries. Yeah, like you like you have to imagine that Europe is pretty small. You know, you drive for two hours and you are in Germany from Prague. So yeah. So then, like traveling around like around Europe with train, it was uh, it was pretty common, and uh, you bought like the one month ticket and you can travel all around all around and you meet new guys and the, these guys they gave you the contact to another guy in another city and that was like amazing experience you know like now we are like looking at a piece in new york which was like which was like the next stage for me as a, as a writer right so you came to new york in 2000 and so that's kind of like a pilgrimage right to mecca how yeah. what was that like for you like it was uh, like to me, it was like all like really mind changing, or like uh, when when you go to the to this uh, gold the whole car, like this 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 was a, a whole car with a K and Romeo, like but we came to New York like just with Romeo and a K, like our our pan, partner in crime he came a little, little later, and like after like the, we we painted the first whole car, it was something like wow, like we. Like we touched the history, and it was so so strong feeling because until then we were like some like they had, I'm talking about this, like especially like this moment of like sun rising in somewhere in Queens and and ha like knowing that we we achieved like the dream like which we had and it was so far away for for us because New York and uh, all the all the history it it has uh, you know like. You, you you don't believe it like that you can touch it until you you do it and once we like we once we did it like with this experience like i i kind of realized that i can do anything 
in the world like that not like only sky is the limit it sounds like re- maybe funny a little bit but but to graphic dev- like, i'm sure graphic writers can understand what i'm talking about and and did this like experience helped me like in my fur- further career right i i would imagine it would because it's ambition right and it's and it's also yeah. for you um and which would 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 actually show up in your work Uh, even up until now, scale, right? Working in scale, um, yeah. working under pressure, uh, uh, working yeah. prolifically. Yeah, but, but, but we were used to it, like, because we did trains around Europe and in, uh, in Prague. So this was more, something more about that you go overseas somewhere where you have, nev- where you have never been and you, like, you, 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 you can do it, like, you can do it by your own, you know? So that was like that, that was big, like big thing to us, you know. Jan, but what else were you thinking about outside of graffiti? What kind of ambition? What kind of creative ambitions um, did you have, if any? It, it, you mean at that time? At that uh, time when you were writing? Uh, yeah, I was like my ambition was the was like to do the great graffiti and be everywhere. <laughs> it was I didn't like I didn't look up to, to art, you know. Like graffiti was everything to me. Of course, I I I I draw. I, I went to art school, but but graffiti was was the main thing, and I could not imagine I will do something else than graffiti at that time, until and, until I did enough and I moved forward. Right, and and one of the things that I I do like about you is how ambitious you are and um, how you're willing to uh, go a bit further um, with you know, how you paint your name and, 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 and particularly this one with the point cakes piece where yeah. there are two names embedded into this piece. One, you want to tell yeah. me a little bit about this? Yeah, like this is the, the, this is like the, the, the time where I, when I try to try to find, find out something new, like some new impulse in, in painting graffiti. So I combined like two, two pieces together so it it creates like like some little interesting intersections uh, in in the letters and like these intersections led me to to the abstractions like slowly like step by step so my like my practice is just to do like to, to go to do to do until it, it breaks through and and I'm like in another stage you know until I reach like the next stage So right, because because here we see in the letter forms they're yeah. they're becoming a bit more organic. Yeah. Um, it's it's like play, playful piece uh, which I did like uh, in Rio de Janeiro where I it's a city I I love uh, and I I went there like for for a student exchange and uh, I painted uh, all around the city and uh, and I what I what I love like what I loved uh, especially about about that that time is that there were no graffiti on the walls. So I, I was the first one who painted. So I, I left there the, the background of the, of the dirty wall. And this is what, what I enjoyed the most, that, that you are the first one who painted the graffiti on the wall. Because in Europe, especially in Prague, like after a few years, there were all, all walls covered with graffiti and you went over the graffiti. So, but this, this moment like of being the first one in, in, on the wall, it's something special. So at 2005 least, least in, in, in Rio de Janeiro, this was yeah. the first graffiti style piece. Uh, no, 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 not at all. I, I, I've been there like on in 2001 first. And so there were almost no graffiti. And uh, like in 2005, there, there were all, all like, like a lot of pieces around, but you, uh, okay. you can, you can still find out like empty walls, like a lot of empty walls. Yeah. But when you go there now, like it's all, it's, all it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for But clarifying. I, I, yeah, I was the, I was there at the moment, like when when it started. Yeah, and this one, I this is this is fantastic. Again, this yeah. speaks to me about the audaciousness of of graffiti um, and placement, and um, and it's really interesting relationship with architecture, right? Um, yeah. That it becomes this one's so big and massive that the piece becomes part of an architecture, even with that 3D yeah. Uh, yeah. pulling it yeah. forward. Yeah, that's, that's what I actually like. Uh, that's what I enjoy that I 
I go like a back and forth, like in 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 the art practice. So at that time, I already like did like uh, 3D pieces, but I enjoy like painting graffiti, like like a graffiti piece, and this and like to do something special about it, you just like make it like make the scale bigger. So and this this particular building, it's a trafo uh, like trafačka we called it, and it was a space like a hall and exhibition hall and concert hall, and uh, the, the 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 house behind, there were like almost thirty studios we run and at that time and we stayed there for ten years. It was like culture underground cultural center, and we did a lot of graffiti productions around the corner. And I had like a lot of memories, and I I'm sure like uh, it it has like pretty strong uh, place in a in a Czech art scene like this this era of this of this building. You, you know, one thing that keeps coming up in some of these talks, especially with the European writers, is how early on there was some kind of community support for graffiti and, and for young artists. You mean like from the state? Like, uh, from in Europe in general, right? Because they weren't quite sure what graffiti was in the early oh, days. Oh yeah, 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 sure. So you, yeah, we also we organized this like a festival of of street art, which were like festival graffiti, <laughs> but you cannot say that graffiti. Like you have to be careful because everybody hated. The yeah, word I was going to ask you what was the political climate? You know, when you were coming up about uh, around like, graffiti, like, what, what like, were the? Yeah, was it a like serious for, crime? No, like first it was like okay, nice, nice pictures, and then like it it turned around because there were so many, and like there was bombed uh, subway and bomb uh, little subway stations, so they have like the, the the city had to deal with it, so they they clarified it as a, as a crime, like in I think in two thousand one or something, and they 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 gave us some some legal walls. But they said at the same time they they give like some legal things around the town. They said like graffiti is a crime if you paint on a on a bridge or on a train or so anything. So it become pretty strict. Uh, and but in fact it's everywhere like that. That uh, yeah. And it's that's I, I can I can come back to to Rio de Janeiro, which is like also this uh, this piece is in Rio de Janeiro in favela. So there, like at that time, where, where when when graffiti was already like a crime in my in my country, in this uh, in 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 Rio, it was it was still like uh, as in the beginning. So that that you can go on in a, in a <clears throat> daytime and paint and uh, nobody cares and uh, like more actually cares and the people are happy about that because to them it's something like colorful and something what what bright brighten up the day. Yeah, and, and and given that their 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 culture is accustomed to that, right, to that vibrancy and yeah. and um, I think community activity, it makes a big difference. But one of the things that's really interesting in kind of this transition, right, about um, kind of the act of graffiti and subversion, right? Like I'm sure there was a point where you said, okay, well, painting on the wall is not enough. I've got to try something different. Yeah, and yeah. you turn to relief yeah. sculptures that you started yeah. putting up around the city. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and again, this is a different kind of subversive, you could say graffiti or slash street art, perhaps. Yeah, uh, definitely. But like to me, to me, like uh, it's it's still graffiti. And the, the one thing is that I wanted to to like go out artistically, like a step further. But at the same time, it's it's still the I was like I was reaching or the purest form of of graffiti, which is like go somewhere and just and just do it without asking, and and it's kind of annoying that like you cannot paint like I I, I was actually frustrated by the fact that I can I cannot paint any wall in the city I want just because of its uh, historic blah blah blah. Right. So I find out I find out find out a way how how can I do graffiti without actually painting the graffiti. So because if you create an object and then you stick it on the wall or screw it on the wall, nobody nobody think that it's a graffiti so they don't call police and I can do it daytime. So I kind of I kind of find out like this kind of freedom of graffiti, like the original origin of origin freedom 
that you just go out and and put your name up. Yeah. So this is like this is the idea of of this like three D bombing. Right. And there's something else happening here, which I find really interesting, is that um, I'm assuming by this point, no pun intended, point, is that you are well aware of contemporary modern art, right? And that yeah. somehow, like for me, when I think of when I look at this, and especially the early European um, modernists, and also the 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 uh, the um, early graffiti sculptors out of Europe, right? That there's a whole different way of looking at the language and constructing the name, right? Mm -hmm. Something shifts here and in and, 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 and terms of what you're doing and how we're thinking about graffiti. And here, which was super interesting, and I'm glad we had spoken about this before because um, uh, here we have this wall relief that says point. And what, what materials did you use for this? This is styrofoam. Styrofoam. Yes, uh, the, the cheapest material you can get, and it's actually like you use styrofoam to to make your facade like uh, warmer or like to warm the facade. Yeah. Uh, so we use the same glue uh, and the same material. We just like put the shape to it. Right. And it, it was actually the original idea of using the styrofoam was uh, was by Zast uh, and uh, in Berlin, a friend of mine, an artist, and we we did this like bunch of pieces. Uh, together like with uh, Akim who is like sitting uh, in front yeah. of the piece and taking pictures. So, so what's really interesting to me about this when I first saw this, I said, okay, this, this reminds me of Akim. And uh, cause I, I, I spent yeah. time with him in Berlin and I started going around the city looking at sculpture reliefs. And then I saw the picture of him uh, taking your picture of your work. And I thought this made sense to me about um, what what Europeans were thinking about public art, but more importantly, graffiti sculpture, right? Or what, what mm -hmm. could relief sculpture, what could even subversive art be um, in terms of putting your name up, right? Because like you said before, somebody sees you putting this up, they're not quite sure, right? Because it's not spray painting. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're building, you're constructing. Yeah. And, and, but more importantly, what I, what I found really interesting about this is the, the typography. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, this, this, this typography like reminds more like Asian, yeah. uh, Asian thing. So, because I like, it, it's very similar to what, what Akim did like at that time. Yeah. So, but we did more pieces. So, so each piece looks a little different. Like, so this one, I, I, I tried like to do it like a little as, as his style. Yeah. So. I'll, I'll share so something with you. I, I, I'll share something yeah. with you. I remember going to, he invited me over to, he's going to cook for me because, you know, he cooks a lot. Yeah. I, I went <laughs> to his apartment and from floor to ceiling, I kid you not, there was writings on paper. There was sculptures pasted everywhere. It was surreal. And it was a language that I couldn't understand uh, other than it almost felt like some kind of new Asian, modern, futuristic typography. Yeah, uh, it, it was really I, fascinating. Um, I remember that time. Yeah, yeah. and and again here we're seeing something really interesting because, uh, for me, when you talk about neoplasticism, and of course, you know that's, you know that that you know it points to Mondrian and those guys and the Dissidio crew, and um, this one is wonderful, man. Uh, so again, part of that connection, right, with European yeah. art from the early 19th century meets street art or graffiti is, is yeah. really fascinating to me. Yeah. I think that the history is, is, is in us because we have it like in school, like we learn, learn it. So I think we probably like think, think this way. And what I want to say about this piece, so, so it's, it's a nice example, what I tried to reach with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with letters that like that, that the reef is, like the sculpture which you have like one view or actually like the letters you see from from front but what 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 I what I wanted to to reach is like to do pieces which you can see from all sides so when you look at the o so it's it's kind of box but you can you yeah. you, it, you you see it from from every every side it's o right so 
this this is like partly but then i then i worked like i developed this style and this this brought me like to to more complex sculpture better than like just the reliefs sure Sure. And again, th those are principles, those are European principles that, you know, I think cubism was based on, right? Seeing things from all sides. Um, and But, you know, um, in terms of, you know, what you're trying to achieve here, it's, it's uh, you know, it's architectural. And, it, and it, you know, and it yeah. speaks to what happens next, right? Because you start putting sculptures all around Prague, right? So they have relationships with the environment and the architecture. Tell me about this series. Uh, this series, uh, it it is uh, like the idea of this of this sculpture. Actually, is part of like multiple sculpture. I did like one hundred of this uh, pieces. Like there, it's cast at uh, gyps gypsum, mm -hmm. and I put I put them around around the city. So the idea was like it's like a three D tag. It's like small, like the size is around like the, the about about a tag, like graffiti tag. And it's not made with a marker, it's just a sculpture. And it makes sense in Prague because like Prague is like, you have, you see like uh, decorative houses, like uh, <clears throat> such a, like <clears throat> you can, you can still uh, houses and, and all, all this kind of, and they have like little roof, like, under the first floor so it's like it's 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 like this side this size roof or or uh or corner so it's the place where i where i place this little sculpture so you cannot reach re reach them by hand but you you can see them so if so you it, place if you place so many of them around prague do do any of them still remain in public yeah they yeah they, they there are a couple of they remained like of oh, i place them like 15 more than 15 years ago and it's amazing that i did like another wave like another shape uh like in 2018 or 17 and wh when i was looking for the for the for the perfect spots i discovered like the old ones which i already remember that i put them uh to that spot so it was it was funny to me like to, to go back and uh it was it was pretty popular. So so one, one uh, like one idea of this sculpture is this uh, like tag or graffiti, and the other one it's I wanted to create something like what 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 kids would look up, and they they would they would think and they would like uh, it would create like their 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 fantasy because they would not know what is it and they will think like is it like a toy somebody like somebody left a toy there or is it is it like an alien or what is it so, so i wanted to create like this kind of like mystery and i really did like at that time nobody knew what it was so there were like maybe articles in newspaper like what it is you know and the, and people were searching uh, searching for for that it was pre internet uh, era you know which is also like very important to mention that like the social media, they changed the, how we percept like the <clears throat> outer space or public space because now we don't look that much around us. But the, before, like people were, they had time like going through the city and, and they looked around. Like yeah, well, so, I would imagine now they would scavenger hunt and probably try to take it for their collection now. Uh, it it yeah, but but it happened like back then as well. So yeah. I had to, I had to climb high. <laughs> To, to 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 put them like where like where it's very difficult to reach. Right. But one of course I I lost yeah, yeah. Lost them. Yeah, so one one sculpture which you know can't be taken was this giant sculpture yeah. in the square. Um this was wildly impressive to me. And um I do wanna I, I wanna know more about this, right? Because this this is something that um from yeah, what, this, as this I understood, is, was something you took on yourself and decided to do yourself. Yeah, it's it's basically like a illegal graffiti in 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 the city of cent like city center, uh, and I prepared it for three months. I, I was I was student back back then, and so I I, I created it in our art academy, and it's made out of wood and like actually the wood rests, which I which I was granted by by people who who do commercials like for tv and they had like the rest of material so they gave it to me or like all like uh, 
plywood from from skate park so i kind of assemb assemble it like put it together like this kind of construction which which says point p o i n t again but uh, from this angle you you probably see maybe maybe the p and <clears throat> And then, like then, then I hired like two like two trucks, and we bring it like with some more guys to this spot. I I constructed like in uh, maybe it took like two hours, and then we just went away, and I I let it be like it like this, and it stayed like three weeks until they they kind of take it away because it was illegal. Did did and, it uh, make the news? Did people come photograph it? Was it yeah, yeah, it was it was it, it was it was pretty popular. Like because yeah, it's it's bright and it's nobody nobody knew what it what it was. So so it was it was pretty pretty like uh, it made an impression at at that time. And it's still like one of the most important projects I did. I think uh, or and, it's it's it, 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 it's like it, it has place in my in my history. Definitely. This yes, most definitely. And and so in terms of again, what it meant to you in, in your history, what what was it meaning to you in terms of uh, both you as an artist um, and your relationship with your city and public uh, space? And at that time, I, I was still, I was still like this kind of like the the graffiti artist thinking that that the graffiti has to be outside and everything what is inside the gallery it's it's crap and or it does it it was not in like it didn't interest me and uh, so i wanted to like like be the one like in in like in the city and put put up like the big things and so it was it was this kind of mentality the gra it, it's still like graffiti mentality in it yeah but it also is what's interesting is that it it um this and i remember this project the city of names yeah it's, and, it was part part of the uh, part of the big jumps uh exhibitions right, in berlin and this, and this project uh, the the city of names was organized by uh, zast and akim again yeah and, 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 and for those that are looking at this this while while it looks like a an architectural it, well, it is an architectural. Yeah, uh, it, it it is basically it, it is like a, yeah. uh, and it says uh, point. It, yeah, it says point. The the the, the I, like the funny thing is that when they invited me and and first I I did like I should get do the gate to the city. So where, where you have this uh, city of names written, it's like it's T. But I started with the T. But there were some guys next to me, and they kind of disappeared, and they didn't do anything. So I kind of continued from from right to left until I did this uh, the whole letter, like a whole piece, and uh, it's made of made out of like the structure. If you look at it, it's uh, it's made out of like Euro pallet, like the pallet you put in under the heavy stuff. So they find it on the streets, and then they bring material every day. So I I, I constructed it, constructed it like day day by day. Yeah. It was yeah, it was awesome awesome time. Yeah, and this was a great. It was Jamios was part of this show, right? Uh, I think, but they were inside. We were, were we were the guys who were outside. We were like they are a little older. And they were at that time. They were also F F Futura, Delta, all mm -hmm. these, all these, all these guys. But we were outside. <laughs> and so the work gets more ambitious and more sophisticated. Um, now yeah. this this piece in the public space. Um, yeah. uh, and and again. Presumably, this is your name. Just uh, in, yeah, this in... is this is this is already like something what is made for more sophisticatedly because we 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 made it like in in SketchUp or like in three D program, mm -hmm. and then it was constructed by by somewhere else. Like I didn't construct it by myself, and so I was like kind of the designer. So it's the, the one of, one of the first pieces I. I was like more more as a, as an architect than than the builder, uh, because at certain point you 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 cannot you can like reach everything by by you or by your hands. Does this and piece still exist? Unfortunately, not because I I didn't have place to 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 place it or to store the store like such a big storage. Actually, you can you can put it like and make it flat. 
but still it's it's really really it was really really heavy and uh, yeah but you know like i I'm, I'm sure i have the 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 sketchup model so if it's needed like we can do it uh, again mm -hmm. I have actually I have I have a smaller version of that. This one is uh, also doesn't exist anymore. It's uh, this this one I uh, I <clears throat> I constructed by myself. Uh, it was part of an uh, exhibition in in Sao Paulo organized by Bino. It was like a, a Biena, a graffiti Biennale. It was graffiti exhibition. Uh, yeah, very very cool. Good good times. Uh, good memories. And so at this yes. point, you're, you're, you're really seriously engaged with uh, not just the name and graffiti, but abstraction. There's something, there's something I see in all of this yeah, that yeah. is starting and to that, become... That, that's already a piece, like which, which the, each letter you can see from, from every side is the letter. Mm -hmm. So you, when you, like, you don't see like the proper P, but there is, uh, when you, when you turn the letter, it's, it's still Correct. the same letter, letter from every side, because the the problem of of doing sculpture out of letters that the letter is like only like two D and that exactly. yeah, and the the thing what I wanted to do or what wanted to reach to do a proper sculpture which which you have like you, you have to walk around and it has to be like yeah. interesting from each side. You know, that was one of the things that I personally early on had issues with uh, graffiti sculptures when I started was that there's something that seemed predictable when it, when they were kind of off the wall and relief, right? Um, yeah. That you didn't get to see it in the round and appreciate um, in the round or the abstraction it can create um, in the round um, as, yeah. as, as a form as opposed to a letter. Um, and yeah. and that actually pushes and actually pushed me more towards um, constructivism and things like that, which seems like something that would be natural for you too. With like with this sculpture, right? You deviate from that uh, a letter yeah. form into um, into more like, like a this. like like yeah, it's it's like a, actually like it's letters. I would say like it's more word word like um, transformed into into body into the body mm -hmm. so so now it looks like more as a as an animal but it's it's worth so so it letters are like bones or or skeleton to to a body mm -hmm. so this is like the more the philosophy philosophy of it like it's it says point which is also kind of philosophical meaning of uh, of, of an object so yeah and so when you start investigating these kind of, again, deeper theories and ideas about art, right? By this point, um, you're, when you're doing these kind of on-site installations, um, uh, just so that people know that this isn't just random, you really thought about this, right? You thought about the colors, you thought about the placement. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about and this the shift. Do... Yeah, this is like... Alongside, alongside with the with the with the sculptures, for example, or with the graffiti, it's uh, it's like this is I would call this street art because this is uh, this is made like in my the cobblestones in my country. Like after winter, it usually got released, and then you have this kind of holes and release the uh, release stones, and I just pick them up and paint them and put them on the on the very same position, and it kind of created like uh, this random random compositions and funny enough is that the, after i i paint it they repair it but if i would not paint it it would stay like broken so it was a side effect of of my of my street art but th but they would not incorporate your street art into the rebuild uh no i, I i'm that i saw i saw the stones like with little paint on it but i think maybe they, they brush it a little mm -hmm. before they put it back and put new stones so and, so and this is also this is also the the it looks like the shapes are random uh, or actually the shapes are done by uh, by construction guys because in like this uh, concrete every time when they change pipes under uh, like under the under the street they may, they cut out the hole and they then like they repair and then they put new concrete 
and it creates it's like this kind of patches which i just uh, filled filled with with color and i also like i i did it around around prague and nobody did nobody nobody knew what it what it was what what i have to think about it because it's so so strange that suddenly That's really you have, like colorful, it, colorful it, it, sidewalks yeah it's interesting to be uh remapping expedited spaces and people don't think yeah. about that that there was an activity that actually happened yeah. beneath there yeah right and it, and uh it also like this kind of ran random uh, compositions it also let me or open up my eyes for for abstraction uh, right. so it so it it went along with with letters and like like intersections with uh, in letters like when when you look at this mural you see uh, you see the letters and intersections like and and then like some like the 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 abstraction which came from the street so it's like both both kind of uh, influences they led me to to abstraction and one of the one of these styles that it, it it brought you to again this is interesting because this leads us into what happens with your within your studio practice right and this is in yeah, new york yeah. city um, yeah. But you're exploring shapes in a whole different way now. Now you're more controlled. Now this is more leans more towards that neoplasticism uh, that you. Yeah, yeah, this, and it it took me uh, somehow like once I once I started to uh, to do to, to paint on canvas, it's it suddenly like after time, it started to like get it more straight and more perfect, more clean. Uh, and uh, so, and after, after, like after this, this uh, series of paintings which you see on this uh, little mural, I decided that I will, that I will paint. I will, I will, I pick up, picked up just the circle, and uh, I decided that that, that this, the, the circle will be my my theme, because there were like, to me, it's like much more easier to do this, uh, this straight lines. Also, when you construct. It's much easier to to work like with the with the straight lines than like to do like round. Uh, yeah. Thing. And and what I like about this this shift, I mean, it's a really bold shift, and 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 also that you committed to it. But in fact, you committed to both, and we'll see that. But more importantly, you committed to the circle, to the orb, and not just yeah. to uh, the shape of it, but to the plasticity of it, right? Like the yeah. texture, the the finishes the yeah. the the placement of the work and here we see one in in a residence uh and i want people to see how beautiful this transforms and how light um yeah. and uh positioning makes this really dynamic um and again this is a this is a whole new shift for you and your work right to to focus yeah, on the it, circle it, it's, that, that that's the thing that uh, that once i write it, once i decided like to use a circle then it then the the circle itself started like morph in like in my work so so it's kind of evolution of of uh, of this just one thing it's like uh that like one first i i started to do like a cir circle and start start to be like um the um the um imperfections and then then of course like i was immediately thinking of doing doing like some kind of muscle and uh, so it, it's it's like the way uh, like once I I do I discover along the way, yeah. This is this this was this is the kind of like I say atomic bubble. Like I, this is we we are seeing like the construction of my on my kind of my canvases or like the multiple canvases I do, and this is also like kind of break down the 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 perfect circle that I like suddenly like you can make a structure out of it. Which which fascinated me with uh, when you when you look at foam, or or bubble that it's made out of uh, many many balls like which are stick together and they created like this uh, rectangular shapes and it's like imperfect and it's very uh, it's like a structure, so I wanted like to find a structure so this is the way how how I enter this, to the structure. Yeah. I, I, I like this series a lot. I, I like it because of con the construction. 
I like because it's an extension of something that I loved a lot by Frank Stella during the 70s of his shaped canvases. And they're not easy to make. And that in this in this image, we see the craftsmanship, right? And that both yeah. the painting and the craftsmanship is really important yeah. to you. And um, it's, 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 it's very nature because when you look at the, all, the, all the point sculptures, so I did like a lot, a lot of craftsmanship before. Yeah. So it's like, it's very nature that one, once I started to paint on, on canvas, I start to like, oh, wow. Like I start to questioning like, what is, what is painting? Like, should I paint like the paint the, uh, the hole and, and shadow or isn't it better just to really create the, the hole in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a painting? So I end up like doing this, like this uh, kind of objects, which is like on the edge of object and on, on the edge of painting. And it's yeah always like with me that when I when I started to when I painted graffiti, it ended up like graffiti sculptures. And once I started to paint on on a, on a canvas, it it's ending up or it's it's morphing in, into a sculpture. Right. And what I like here, this image really speaks to you know the the the, the two disciplines you have, right? Or yeah. two aesthetics you have um, in yes. terms of the the constructed painting. Um, and, and again, discipline, discipline, discipline in terms of uh, not just, um, you know, you know, the, the cleanliness of, of, the, of your production, but also your line work, right? Um, your consideration yeah. to space, color and space and color fields. Um, and that's something that keeps translating into your work, your, your firm understanding of color field painting, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and, and the effects. And I think that comes from graffiti. Graffiti artists tend, tend yeah. to have this instinct when it comes to painting in space. Yeah, definitely. From the beginning, because, because graffiti writers, we always painted on, on something or somewhere. So like the soundings become like become big part of the piece, piece itself. Yeah. So and, and, yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah I, and, and I, again, I just interrupt for a second, but I find these really interesting and important in ways that most people won't, in terms of 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 what you're attempting to do, uh, both with form, uh, painting, and temperature, and again, going back to the, the early concepts of color field painting, right, and that uh, you're you're exploring something so i don't i don't know how to put it man it's so unique that you bring life to those concepts physical life yeah yes some, some i don't know how to describe you know it's just like when i look at it it's 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 is it painting is it uh is it sculpture is it like i'm, I'm just creating like uh, actually you know you you can call it like point like it's like little points or you know, like this is point, this is point, that is point, or this, and yeah. But there's, there's something quite, one of the things that I like about them is mood, right? How individually yeah. they carry a mood. Um, there, is, there is a certain sensuality um, as well to them, which I really like. Um, uh, but, you, you know, as, as well, I, I mean, a, a, a command of two things, I think, that are very interesting. Um, both mm -hmm. color and uh, form. Yeah, yeah. Like color always like is the is the very important thing uh, in in my work. Uh, I love I love to work with colors. Like as, when I was graffiti writer, I also also like enjoy like combining uh, the colors and uh, and shape, of course. So it's still the same same way of thinking what I was. Yeah, and at the same time, I, I love to to do monochrome, so it's so many so many possible ways how to how to go or where to go. This one was unusual yeah. for me. I'd never seen anything like this. We see a kind of a yeah. certain angle, and then then we see on the right yeah. a true profile yeah, the, of this and how this. Yeah, comes this, I don't know how this this one come up. Like where where come up the idea of of leaving there like a little bit of a uh, little bit of, of the fabric or of actually the canvas which i which i use so like little 
the to show like how is it made because it looks so perfect from from outside but it's ba- it's basically a very simple technique that is just like stretch canvas on 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 a stretcher frame just the stretcher frame mm-hmm. is uh, it has a interesting shape or like 3d shape so so i i did like this kind of non non conform uh, piece so when you do works like this right like like what we've seen in 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 these works how far removed do you feel from graffiti so to speak or 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 that story mm. um it's obviously it's uh to me it's about movement about like clean lines uh about colors uh but the like uh the idea of 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 of, of the piece itself it's not graffiti anymore, you know. Yeah. It's just like you you can you can see the experience, I think, but uh, but philosophically, it's 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 somewhere else, I think. You know, it's yeah. not not about name anymore. It's more about like physicality or or or, or more about life. Right, yeah. and, and that's one of the things that I, I I find really interesting in this culture, right? Like that there yeah. there are few. Uh, like yourselves and others that uh, move into a more individualistic and contemporary space with their work uh, without apology, right? That it's, you've already done your dirt, you've already got yourself, you know, in that story, but now you're looking for the opportunities to take that work or your ideas that much further uh, into new materials like this, like the bronze sculptures. Uh, yeah. t- tell me about this work, about finally seeing your work yeah. in, in, in a high-end finish. Yeah, it's, it was amazing. Like first I did this, uh, like the, behind the bronze, there is the, the original, which was made out of fiberglass. And mm-hmm. uh, it, it was uh, exhibited I, uh, in scope, like in Miami, I don't know which year. And then like the galleries, like the, the lady find out the, Kind of like somebody was interested in it, and and we got a commission like to create like the sculpture, but for for public, I, uh, for, uh, public foundation and collection of sculptures somewhere in U.S. And yeah, they they basically order it. So I had, I had the pleasure to work uh, in bronze, and uh, uh, unfortunately, like the sculpture is not installed yet. So as far as I know, it's somewhere stored, and I hope it will be out one day. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely an amazing uh, experience, like to to touch the bronze. Actually, I did before, but like small, yeah, like this this size, which is like uh, which is uh, the tech. Uh, so it's like to do like with bronze, like in 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 like bigger size it was it was pretty amazing so i hope and, i will have a chance to and to, and here's what it. i here's what i like about this it's so interesting because it's it says point right and yeah. uh, um again it takes some effort to see that but but it also looks figurative and uh it it looks organic um uh it, there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot i like about this little little sculpture yeah it's here. it's it's i'm I'm look at it like I look at the world as something uh, vivid, some like the the, the world. It's uh, when you imagine like that the the, the world made of letters suddenly like came alive and it become become an animal. So mm-hmm. to me, it's like a, some combination between animal and and the letter. Or actually, like the world once you once you write it, it, it start to exist. It's uh, like the theory of world, and so basically this is the this is the how i how i see the point word like what is point this is point yeah well i you know one of the things i like is your application um to other materials and yeah. at, here we see some of the pottery and we see the translation of the paintings into this pottery yeah. uh which, which it was, is it was quite... actually i have to say like it's it was collaboration with uh one pottery artist so i did like he did the shape of course like we consulted i i I told him I needed like more organic, and and then I I did this gradients. So so it it, it came up well, like pretty good. Like, I think we did uh, three, mm-hmm. uh, three three pieces only. Yeah, and so, and here for instance, like I say about the continuity of um, 
your expression, right? If we look at one of your wall reliefs and then come back to these two, we see a connection, right? And 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 how yeah. you're translating from medium to medium. And as we right. see this person looking and thinking about what is this, right? What how yeah. they you know, like that, there's there's something to be said about what people are imagining these things to be. What what have you heard? What kind of feedback have you gotten? Uh, it's usually usually like it, in the, uh, it's rel relying to to the to the shapes. So usually like these organic shapes, they they remind people of uh, of some microcosm bacteria, and and uh, like basically microcosm. And once it's more like circular and more 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 straight, it's more about like cosmos, like macrocosmos. So, yeah, I love this placement of, of this piece. It's, oh, this it's is beautiful! It's very contrast, very contrast. elegant. Yeah. And so now that you're you know you're you're showing work right, you're 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 firmly like establishing yourself as. A contemporary artist in every every sense of that word, um, and in the market of art, and 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 in the global market of art. Um, when you, for instance, show these works, and when you're out there, in, in, you know, in public with your work, does the discussion or of graffiti or your past in graffiti come up in in kind of where you say there's an intersection between the past and the present? Uh, I think it come up because it's it's everybody knows like or everybody like everybody who's who's like who is interested in my work they they kind of like start to dig and they find out that um, my history is like is being graffiti writer so every time when I when I talk with someone it come up that uh, the graffiti it's basically like part of myself uh, and it's yeah probably impossible to. <laughs> to get uh, like to be cut out of that yeah. so but uh, but i i i think it's 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 not that important like it's important to me because it's my history but uh, in these pieces i i don't i'm not sure if 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 it's if it's so present like this this graffiti history yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it may not be appropriate right in, yeah. in, in in terms, I mean, yes, in history, in terms of contextualizing you, yeah. um, but well, in maybe, maybe maybe once I once I start to put like these kind of things in the city, like in a, in the public spaces, it may be like create like this di yeah. uh, like this dialogue about like what the, what was the graffiti back then and now, but like once it's inside, it's more it's 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 yeah. more like art piece inside. Yeah. Uh, so a question for you. Uh, most of us have been struggling through this crisis and yeah. trying to make sense of this world uh, during COVID. Um, how have you been coping? How have things have been in Prague? And uh, how uh, has it, that affected your work? Actually, like, like the first, first wave of Corona in, in the springtime of last year, it, it was like I was so, so busy and, and so much traveling that I was like, wow. I chilled out. I had the chance to chill out, and and luckily, like us as a as a visual artist, we 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 are not living out of out of uh, out of uh, uh, like concerts and uh, out of public. I mean, like meeting. Like we don't need masses for our work. So it so I can. I basically I went to my studio every day, and I and and I had the chance to to work in calm. And uh, and focus on on different series which you don't we don't we don't show up here. So it was it was in in these terms was was positive and I I hear that like many people like kind of slow slow down or chill chilled out, and uh, it was good. But uh, of course it's 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 really bad for many businesses, but but the art business is not not hit that much, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I have to say that I'm I'm really like glad that, of course, COVID is bad, but I'm glad like there is no World War Three, for example, because when I was small, I was like so, like I was afraid there will be like World War Three, and uh, and it's like to know about the nasty things that people did to each other, like it it was so awful, 
that I was I was always w- wondering like what will be the the challenging thing for our generation. So and if it's if it's COVID. And it's still still good. It's better than like dropping bombs around your town and uh, going to fight against some guys, you know, uh, from different country. It's so stupid. So it's it's. I think it's better to fight against like this little virus than against people, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, one of the one of the kind of unnerving things in the last couple of years has been how you, certain parts of Europe have been. Um, leaning towards those old habits you know and uh, uh of you know w- w- which are hard they're not they're not as liberal as they used to be but they're you know people are fighting back uh in your countries but that said i mean you keep producing and you keep showing yeah. which is wonderful you know through all this this trouble tru- all these troubles there's triumph right and you show at the museum uh, this one uh, tell me about this museum piece because it it's it's a, it's a beautiful piece, as we as we can see up close. Um, yeah, it's, but now, it's, just to get a sense like, of the scale, yeah. it's actually it's it's in a Czechoslovak museum in in uh, in the U.S. in uh, where is it? Like I I I forgot to uh, where where is it? Where is it? Uh, and uh, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it, it's basically basically commissioned work. And uh, um, which I was invited to come and and produce, I think last year, and uh, it was a celebration of uh, of actually of of, of eight of the year eighty nine, where, where the Berlin Wall fell down, and they invited me for a workshop, and they also uh, the Czechoslovak Museum also ordered uh, this this piece for the hallway and. It was amazing. I was happy that they or they, that they choose like this style because lately, like the, the my organic paintings are much more popular. But but I but to me, like this this series of like cut through paintings or objects, it's uh, it has a, yeah, it's much it's the it's same importance to me as as the or the organics. Now the organics, what I, what's really interesting, you have a series of pictures on how you present them, which I really like. Um, yeah, well, this this is, one, uh, yeah. yeah, this one's wild because it looks like it's just floating in space. But it, it, as it's, customary, it seems, um, there's always a street shot. Yeah, right? and, that, and that's also that's also or, thing back back to graffiti that uh, that uh, we were talking earlier that. Uh, that as a graffiti writer, when you when you paint on on a, on a walls, uh, you always have the wall and the surrounding, which is part of the piece. When when you sh- when you when you take pictures of of a, of a, of a train or of a graffiti, you always like to have a nice background to it, or at least I have it. And so once I was uh, painting just in the studio, I was thinking like I have to I have to bring it back to the city and. Uh, I had this idea for, and I did it in in New York in 2014. This art in public project, where I took took out my paintings to the street and asked strangers to 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 assist and and hold the painting for me, and I take the photographs. And this is this what we see right now. It's it, it's in Taipei, so I did it like in various cities around the around the globe, and I time to time I I like I continue to do this project and this is what I like that that you have the painting in the city and so you, and you see the street so it's kind of based like I'm bringing back the idea of graffiti to my to my present paintings <laughs> I guess I, I guess a leopard can't can't change its stripes right <laughs> What, what what is it like? I didn't understand. A, a leopard can't change its or a zebra can't change yeah. its stripes. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. Right. <laughs> it's always it's always in me. Yeah. And it always will. Well, that's the whole thing, right? Because for me, it, and and this is what I like about the conversation, right? As you investigate it, right, and 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 in one sense, I ask you, how far away is it removed? But then there's another thing that again, another theory or philosophy like this that attaches itself to that history, right? Yeah. And, and that is unique, right? In terms of the, the, the writer mentality. 
yeah, like yeah, I, I think these these things are very similar. Like I mean, like the the graffiti writers or they develop their work and they have this experience. I think, and it's a very very similar like a way of way of seeing the world or like how to how to what the, what the art is to them or what they, what the art means to them. Yeah. And I see some question, can, questions here. Jan, can you establish a clear and original body of work with this series? Do you want to evolve them or, and change slowly or do you want to reset and do entire new series? Actually, like, I do both, you know. I also yeah. did, actually, like with the COVID thing, what I was, what I was talking about, that I did like total new series uh, uh, with like interest, like also circles, but uh, like spraying, uh, stencils like difficult to describe more like creating a foam uh so sometimes i i i totally like cut cut away and and do new series but then again it, it come back and i use like uh what i what i already found and combine it so it's uh the creation it's always like process of uh digging something new and using something old and so how far, again, this is really interesting to me, and, and it's quite important. I think people don't under, quite understand this, right? When you are, there's one thing when you're an artist in the studio and you explore. There's another thing when you're an artist in the marketplace and people are used to looking at something familiar from you from time to yeah. time and that you can't deviate from that too much. You, 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 if, you, yeah. if you take a hard right, you may, yeah, lose, yeah. Your, you may lose your audience. Uh, that's that's that, that's true and that, that i was i was once i was like thinking about like this art market and promotion i was like really afraid of of that, that because i always tend to try many things and i i think i thought like i have to concentrate that like to be to be like rec uh, like to get the recognition like to be recognized by by the collectors and by the by mm -hmm. the by the by the audience and now I'm I'm kind of like I feel I get this like uh, recognition, and and I'm happy that I have that I'm able like to go in different ways, because because once you get the recognition, then also I think like the the people they like your work or they know your work they enjoy it if you if you kind of shift it somewhere else because if you if you keep repeating that what the people know they start to get bored. And you got bored, or at least I would get bored uh, of doing like repeating or doing the the same. So, so I'm trying to, like to like not be too uh, like yeah like to be in cage of of my of my style of or you know of my significant uh, significant style. So I want to like go go. Yeah, of course. And, and, and I mean, clearly, we see that in the presentation, the evolution of the work, the things that are, are, are t literally taking shape over the years and developing. But, you, you know, what I appreciate is that you're fixed on a theme, that you're really working and reworking an idea um, that really starts with, that started with graffiti. And, and graffiti is working and reworking the name and reworking painting ideas. Um, and then when you get yeah. to the, you, you know, the art making space, the contemporary space, the challenge is, um, how do you stay on a fixed idea and series and work exhausted, right? Exhausted mm -hmm. at, to, to, to its maturity, right? So that you can say, okay, yes, I thought this through, I lived this through, I'm ready for the next, it's going to present the next thing. Uh, it's, 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 it's natural because I, I do until until it's it's done and one, once like it comes itself you know it's like i i can think like I, I sometimes i really think like i need to i need to like like do something new i need to find out something new but it's it's impossible until you reach it like by work at least like so i i repeat i repeat until until something like something little change and then it like it flip around well so, well something that, something new uh, that's that that is is happening with your work. It's not just with the work. It's how you're presenting it, right? Because you just did the presentation with Magda, uh, yeah. Denise Gallery, and uh, you know, and 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 you guys presented online virtually. Yeah, but it was it was by 
actually like by circumstances, you know, yeah. because I could not come to Paris because it's, there is lockdown and uh, actually it, it it would be possible, but I could be I could be uh, like stuck in a, in a in a airport or anything. So if we decide like I'm not going and we will wait, and then then like one day earlier I was like writing to Magda and Clemence like say yeah let's let's meet at least like on on FaceTime like to 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 you know inaugurate the show like at least to for the feeling and and Magda was like came up with this idea of like doing uh, Instagram live opening so we we basically like created like like improvisations and it turned out great you know I had I had I, I had the same feeling as 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 the and the on the opening like a real opening you know like I mean like I mean mentally that because like you as an artist you work on it and then you want to see it and and I, I saw it. I was not not there physically, but like mentally, I was I was there, and uh, it was it was amazing. Or amazing amazing experience. Actually, actually, like what can what else can we do? You know, in these times. No, I, absolutely. I, I completely get it. I mean, we 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 tend to do the same thing here at the museum. You know, these yeah, virtual yeah. exhibitions. Yeah, as as you say, like when we were talking like before. That we have to adapt, like we have the, as the only way, you know, how to survive. Yeah. That we have to adapt. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. So listen, on behalf okay. of the Museum of Graffiti, our staff, yeah, all of your friends here, man, we want to really thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me especially, because I I've, I've been uh, watching you since you were young and developing, and and yeah. I knew you know that there was something special about your work because you were doing some really interesting graffiti sculpture stuff. Um, to see where you are now, um, again, very impressive and, and yeah. wonderful. So uh, continue success, brother. And uh, yeah. thank hopefully you. And we, hopefully you get to visit us here someday soon. Yeah, I hope I hope so that I'm in, in May I come to visit you. And thank you again, like Carlos. Uh, I really appreciate like you and and uh, Alan Katz's work because it's amazing what what you are doing for for graffiti community. And I have to say that we know each other like for many years already. Yeah. And like since since the beginning, like you and, and, and Alan, you were the guys, they were like helpful and open, open minded for the guys like from Europe. So I really felt it back then already. And now like we have like graffiti museum and who who is doing graffiti museum? You and, and Alan, which is which is amazing because when I like the Alan Cat was the guy like who who gave us us tips of uh, of layups like in 2000 where we have mm. to go and paint the, the trains but at that time we were nobody you know like no like yeah. no one from 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 new york like we, we met cope for example and he didn't look at us even you know and uh, and alan was like helpful at that time already you know and yeah. then he he was the guy who helped me with like to exhibit my works in 2014 like yeah. at that time with, which i photographed them on the street so yeah, and I remember when you came to New York, and and one of the things that impressed me is you you put on your own show in New York. Yeah, yeah, and and, and, and uh, was that the, that's the same year we painted a mural together in Queens. I was think it? so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it was it was because I I have no other choice. You know, I I wanted to present it, and uh, I just find out the space and organize uh, like one e evening exhibitions. <laughs> Yeah. And and Alan Alan helped me to create create it like called some other friends. I think you pop up uh, as well, right? Like you, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah. So so still the same people. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you you know, I'll say this: we're not just a graffiti museum, right? And, and 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 this is what I like to tell people because while we celebrate graffiti, I you know, uh, yeah, I was a writer, but I've been an a modernist sculptor, painter. I've been a, a contemporary artist for many, many years, just like many other people like yourself that move beyond beyond that, right? Yeah. And that we celebrate that, right? We want people to know, yeah, we started here, but we think like this now. We consider things like this. We consider art history. We consider practice this way. We are part of an important conversation that links uh, history and the contemporary market together with the urban experience, right? Uh, yeah. A very unique e experience. 
And so it's really important for me anyway, in terms of how we have these conversations and why we have these conversations, because I don't want to get stuck and talking to you about all the trainings and things that you've done. Yes, we know that. That's special. Yeah. But what comes from that after the fact? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's really at the heart of these conversations for me. And also, you know, what I admire about those that take the risk and the commitment to, um, you know, try to make uh, not just a, a, a life for themselves, but a legacy. Uh, and that's what you do. And, and, and what we do here is in small part, help you um, advance that legacy. So thank you. Yeah, thank you again. And good night. Yeah, yes, sir. Awesome. Ciao. Peace, brother. Talk to you Bye. soon. Peace. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for Bye. watching.